In our recent 3D base camp, I was teaching a session on the follow me tool. So for example, I could select this surface as the path and then using the follow me tool, click on that shape to create a uh, picture frame. Now the question came up, how would you take and break this apart into the different pieces used to actually make the frame? If you were to actually build the frame out of wood, how would you break it apart into the, these pieces as you see here, uh, which is useful to have the angle and the, the different pieces broken apart. Now there's not a way to automatically do it with the follow me tool, but we're going to explore some ways to do just that, to break this apart into different pieces. To start off with, I'm going to use this frame that we just created and group it. And then using the line tool, I can start from any of these points, but as long as I keep it along that same angle, draw a line, draw a line up in the blue direction, draw another line in the blue direction. In this case, I used inference locking to make sure and finish that line, which creates a plane that is exactly in line with the angle of that picture frame. So I'm going to right click on that surface and choose a line axis and then use the scale tool to scale this bigger. Now it's important that I align the axis to make the scale tool work correctly. You see here. Then I right click again on the axis and reset it. Now I select that surface, make it a group. I'm going to copy this group and then use the scale tool to mirror that copy. As I pull it through, I watch in the value control box and when I'm at negative one, I've got a perfect mirrored copy and then move that surface into place. Essentially what I have now are two cutting planes that I can use with the intersect with model tool. So I select all the geometry. I'm going to explode them first, make sure they're selected and then right click, choose intersect with model. Then I'm going to erase out the geometry. I don't need those surfaces and select uh, this other geometry and erase it. Now I've got the piece I need, select it, make it a component, name it as uh, something that will be meaningful to me. And now I can break this apart into the different parts for the picture frame. So I copy one side, mirror it. I'm going to select both sides, rotate a copy of them. And with those two selected, I'm going to right click and say make unique, which will make those unique components separate from the others. So I make them shorter or something like that. And now I'll just use basic inferencing to move them into place. Select that corner, move it over. Select this other part of the picture frame, move it up here. I'm just going to zoom in and check, make sure it's lined up. Sure is. And there you go. You can make this at any size that you need. You stretch it out a little bit and then pull this other piece over. So that's sort of a general way to do it. That's one way that you could break it apart, create your frame and uh, break it into its pieces. And you can see this works in various instances or even four, six, eight sided frames. Now let's look at another way to approach the same task. One of the advantages of the follow me tool is that you can very quickly just explore these options. So I can say, you know, let's look at different frame options here, but you can just as quickly, using Control Z or Apple Z if you're on a Mac, undo those options and get back to your basic shapes. In this case, I'm going to select one of these shapes, move it over and then just use push pull, and pull it out. Then I'm going to open the component browser. This time I've created a couple of essentially jigs, really, that's what you'd call them in woodworking. They're going to speed up the process for me. I don't need to create those planes now created them beforehand. So I pull it in, explode it, intersect with model like we did before, and I get the piece, the frame pieces that I need. Just makes it a little bit faster. 
And now we could make this a component like we did before and build a frame out of it. Let's take uh, some time to understand how you might go about creating some of these various jigs. So I've got a couple I've created here and we're going to recreate a few. With the polygon tool, you can create any number of sides. Just start drawing a polygon and type 6s or 3s for different sides. And with the rectangle tool, you can draw a perfect square just by watching and being careful about drawing that. So here I've drawn a perfect square and a six-sided polygon. I'm going to divide this square so that I have the right angle. And I'm going to do the same with the polygon. Starting here and hovering over the edge, it will tell me where the center is. So I can draw in those two angles that I need. Now I'm going to select those surfaces and copy them up and away. And pull them up so that I can use them here. And we're going to create our jig out of these surfaces. Now one thing to keep in mind if you're doing um, something more than a simple square, this surface that we've created uh, from the six-sided polygon from the hexagon, it's not quite yet ready to use. And you can see why if we uh, were to try and use it at this point, you see the angle's wrong. Because even though the angle here is correct, it's not lined up correctly with the piece that we want to use. So keep that in mind. We're going to fix that. We'll draw in this line to fill that surface out again, and then select this geometry and use the rotate tool. Rotate it by the center point and rotate it up so that it's along the axis. In that way, it'll be correct. I'm going to copy the surface out just a little bit. And when you use uh, this type of component, obviously you can move the surface out uh, to get yourself a, a longer result or not. And now I'm selecting these edges and using inference locking. I'm just inference locking to the edge itself. I'm pulling them out. You've got to make sure and keep that angle and inference locking will let us do that. So I'm going to select this geometry make it a component. And you can name this whatever uh, name you'd like that's something you can remember it by. So I'll say this is a jig, it's a rectangle, uh, it's going to have 90 degrees and create that. I want to create this one as a component too. In this case I know the angle is 60 degrees because I've already measured it. But if you don't, just use the protractor tool and measure your angle. Down in your value control box it'll tell you what that angle is. In this case it's 60 degrees, which you might know. Uh, that's not a difficult angle to know, but if you had a 13-sided polygon, maybe you wouldn't know offhand what that angle was. So it's easy to find out. You can name this uh, something meaningful to you that will be useful and create your components. Now that you've created your components, we want to be able to use these components in any model that we might be creating now or three months from now. So we want to build a library in our component library uh, that will let us do that. Click on the expand button in the component and then on this little icon you see you can click on add to favorites. Somewhere on your computer create a folder. I named it my components. And now you can just drag and drop those components that you created into this new folder. I'm going to drag and drop all the components I created, both now and uh, the ones from just a little while ago. And just to show, I'm going to select this geometry and copy it and then start a completely new file. So we don't have the components from the previous file. I'm going to copy that geometry in so that we have those uh, surfaces. But now if I go to Component Library, I can click through the various libraries that are available. And one of the libraries that shows up is now My Components that has those various jigs that we just created.
Anytime you open SketchUp now, you'll have these. So just to show an example, I'm going to pull in uh, one of these. I believe this was uh, for an eight-sided frame. Pull it in, do intersect, and now I've created the piece I need. So let's zoom in, select this, and make it a component. Now, the angle on this I knew was 45 degrees. So I could rotate it 45 degrees and move it into place and then select these two pieces, rotate them again, and continue to place them. That's one way that you could build this out. Let's look at another way. If you didn't know the angle or just wanted to be a little faster, I'm going to draw a line from two points on this frame. Now it's important to know which two points you pick. So I pick the two bottom most points there and then I continue to draw a line in that same direction. On the opposite side, I'm going to draw a line from those same two points, uh, of course on the opposite side. And then using inference locking, I can find exactly where those will meet. Now, using the rotate tool, and watching my blue direction, I can rotate a copy and say seven more and I have the frame completed. So that's one way to approach it. Uh, there's other ways that you could do this same task, but hopefully this is something useful that you might be able to incorporate into your own work.